What's up today guys? We're gonna work a little bit with our man here that has in the tracheal tube in talking about oral care. What to do, what not to do. So today we've got the Q2 Oral Care Kit. This is an official unboxing, but it's not really as exciting as other unboxings are. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna open this thing up and get it started. So I'm gonna start by opening up right here. And I'm gonna take this front aspect off. What this is gonna allow us to do is to have the pieces for the Oral Care in order and ready for the next 24 hours. So. If you look at it here, we've got 24 hours worth of care, and we're going to start on this side and move this direction. There's also some stuff on the back here uh, that's small print that you can read on your own time. But um, these are all labeled, as you can see here, nicely labeled with numbers all the way up to the 22nd hour when we're going to change this thing out. So we're going to take so the first thing it. out, and you're going to see this is our... Uh, they call it a prep pack, but it's actually our yank hour. So it's a covered yank hour. I'm going to open this thing up. This is changed every 24 hours. Let's see. Open this thing up here. We have this piece and this piece. Important pe important aspect of this is when you put these together, you got to kind of put a little twist on them. Put them in tightly together so that it doesn't come off. Now, if you didn't put the twist on it and you had it on there loosely, you go in here to suction and you got, wow, well, that comes off like that. That's all bad news. So put the, tighten that up a little bit. You can see this is a covered yank hour. You have your on off switch here and you have your adapter. This is really super generic, but this is the adapter for your suction canister right here. So there's your new yank hour for the ship. Super important part of taking care of somebody's oral pharynx when they're on a ventilator. You got to think about this, how this is working. So we have an endotracheal tube going in. We have a cuff inflated below the vocal cords that keeps any air from coming up through the trachea into the oral pharynx. So that those everything that's in the oral pharynx is just going to kind of sit there and fester. That's, that's about the only way to think of it. And that's why people's mouths get so nasty. We want to keep all that nastiness cleaned out. And we want to keep it from falling on top of the endotracheal tube cuff. Because when it goes around that cuff and you have micro aspiration around that endotracheal tube cuff, um, that's when you're going to have your ventilator associated events leading to ventilator associated ammonia. So we want to keep this mouth really clean. So the first thing we like to get out is the toothbrush. So tooth brushing is extremely important. In this pack, this actually will adapt to the yank hour. So I'll show you how that works. I'll open this up. So we have some different things here. As you can see, we have the toothbrush adapter and you're like, well, how do I get this thing out, Jimmy, and brush your teeth like this? No, it adapts to the suction. I'll show you how that works. But um, this is what we're gonna use. So we're gonna pull this off, adapt this to the suction. Teeth brushing is done every 12 hours here. And now you have suction with tooth brushing. So then we have a couple other things. We have an anti-plaque solution that we use. With the toothbrush and once we're done we use the mouth moisturizer around their mouth and this if patients can um, communicate with you at all this is the part they like the most is that mo mouth moisturization because when you have an endotracheal tube in your mouth gets extremely dry and you get really extremely dry mouth so you can apply that with this toothette so the suction will work like this you turn the suction on you brush their teeth Here's the biggest thing that I think a lot of people don't do, and um, I'm going to lean towards my respiratory therapist and the fact that we will get aggressive. Now, don't there's a, there's a time to be, you're too aggressive, but get aggressive in getting around every aspect that you can in here with toothbrushing, okay? Just like you do yourself. Brush everything that you can. Brush the endotracheal tube. Brush the tongue, the mouth. Really clean it out. Okay, because their mouth is just sitting there and it and it is super dry and it's just a great place for bacteria to live. So toothbrushing is extremely important. The Let next part that comes away. with the kit 
is the straight suction catheter. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you, this catheter, I, I don't believe it does exactly what it needs to do, but if you look right here, it's a straight catheter that goes down. It's supposed to go down the oropharynx and suction off anything off the top of the endotracheal tube, cuff. Now, we know there's two holes back there. We know the esophagus and the trachea, they sit like this. The anterior aspect, of course, is the trachea. Um, if it wasn't, it'd be really easy to intubate people. But I'm just saying that's the way we're made. So we have the trachea on this aspect. If we put this catheter in the oral pharynx, likely it's going to go posterior and it's going to really probably not come up into the trachea. I'm going to be honest with you, unless you're running right around the tube. This, so this is nice to clean out the oral pharynx, but it's really difficult to get to go down past the vocal cords, even down to where the cuff is. So that tends to be a difficult thing. I want to show you a little trick that I do sometimes. It's a little bit aggressive, but it tends to get a lot of that stuff out that's really low. And the stuff that's really low, it's important we get it out because it's the stuff that's going to micro-aspirate. So the catheter is super simple, just like any other straight catheter. Um, yep. Pretty sweet shape there. Um, oh, that's going to go on this. It's going to go like this. And it's going to go down orally and around the corner. If you hit the trachea, you're good, but likely you're just going to be getting oral pharynx and suctioning out that area back there. Now, you won't get a, you'll get some pooling, but if you have their head like we should at 30 degrees, 30 to 45 degrees, you won't get a lot, but there are pockets that will pool a little bit of mucus. So it's really good to go back with this and get all of that out, especially after you brush their teeth. That's why it comes right after the toothbrush. The so last stuff is done in the first, in the first oral care. Now we're two hours later, so we're hitting the the, so we did the first part, we did the two hour mark. So now we're doing the suction swab with the mouthwash pack. So let me open that up. See some nice aspects here. Back to this piece again, I'm gonna take it off here just to make it easier. So you're gonna see, this is back to that piece of the yank hour. We have a couple different pieces. This is going to adapt to this. Put it on, you should have got a little plastic on plastic, that's good. So this has suction and a soft tip. So we're gonna use a couple different things with this. We have an alcohol-free mouthwash. You can soak this in there, go back in there and clean it out. And then again, we have the, the crowd pleaser, the, the mouth moisturizer that we can put on with this swab at right here. So we will use this with the suction. We'll go in, remember this is two hours later, we're gonna go in and we're gonna go through all these different areas, make sure what I really tried to do is get really, really tight in there with the endotracheal tube, okay? Even if you need to help secure it a little bit, get that endotracheal tube because that is where you're mainly going to have, it's an easy path, just like a Foley catheter. It's an easy path for, the path for things to pass down to the cuff and aspirate. So I actually like to clean the tube first and then go after cleaning their mouth. So clean around the tube with this, you can suction it out. And then that's how that works. Put the mouth moisturizer on. Up uh, close and personal here. So we have, you can see where we've gone so far. We've gone through our first section, our second hour. Now we're into the fourth hour. And this pretty much goes with these right here for our next, until the next 12 hours hit. So this is the rest of our shift. Let's take a look at what we have. We have swab suction. So that looks familiar, right? There's your piece that goes on the yank hour. You have your mouth moisturizer you're going to put in with the toothette, and then you also have your mouthwash here. Next time, you're going to have, and actually, oh, nice. So this first green one that I missed, so this first green one actually has a little bit of H2O2. For all of you chemists out there, um, which I'm sure there's a lot of them, but actually you don't have to be a chemist. It's hydrogen peroxide, H2O2. So there's a little bit of hydrogen peroxide in here. Hydrogen peroxide Works really well to clean the mouth, but I'll tell you what it works great on is if they have any dried blood. Uh, hydrogen peroxide works great to get blood and break up dried blood. Now, hopefully they don't have that, but let's say they had some kind of oral trauma or something like that. We're going to be a little more gentle in there, but if there's some dried blood on their lip or they let's say they seized and bit their lip, then that, that would work really well for that. So the big key is that you don't want to keep putting H2O2 
on something consistently over and over and over and over again because it will break down the actual process that uh, they're forming a clot and forming um, any kind of covering over top of you know of any type of cut that they have so as their body tries to heal you're going to break that down with h2o2 so be real careful with this after the first cleaning so we have that one the next one we have this is the six hour very simple we have the regular um alcohol free mouthwash mouth moisturizer everything adapts to the suction as before then back again h2o2 we know that one and then eight and then our 10 hour is right back here so we have this one again with the alcohol free mouthwash suction so there we go you may say jimmy this two hour q2 hour mouth care is crazy you know what our patients are worth it it is a lot of extra time but it keeps our mouth really clean and if that was this was uncle uncle joe if uncle joe was on the ventilator i would want to make sure his mouth was that clean so i would want them doing q2 hour mouth care so if you see what happens at the 12 hour point, we come back to the toothbrush again. We have the catheter for suctioning, and then we go back in for the rest of your 12 hour shift with Q2 hour oral care, just as we did for the first 12. So that's kind of a rundown. Let me show you a couple so tricks. Anytime you're messing to. around the oral pharynx and there's an endotracheal tube in, you need to know a few things about it. So uh, it's always great for documentation. If you can see on this endotracheal tube, there's some numbers right here and it says 6.5. 6.5 is the inner diameter of the endotracheal tube, not the outer diameter, the inner diameter is the most important and it's 6.5 millimeters. Most important because that is the tube, that's the size of the tube they're breathing through. Now, 6.5 is traditionally pretty small. Uh, usual tubes for adults, we're gonna be using 7.5s, 8s, and 8.5s. Uh, 6.5 might be a small adult, okay? The larger the endotracheal tube, the more easy it'll be to wean them off a ventilator. Remember that. If you're going to get tubed, you want a big one, like really big, like 8, 9, eight, sorry, 8, 8.5 or 9. That's what size I want because it's going to be easier when I go and wean off the ventilator. So that's a little bit about the endotracheal tube. The next part is you want to know with the tube, the documentation of where the tube is. Now, there's so many people document so many different things. Some people will document 22, uh, 22 at the lip, or in this case, they may say 21 at the teeth or 20 at the gums or something like that. The most consistent thing to do is the teeth of the gum. The lips can change. The lips can be different as you go around. I like the tooth of the gum. Unfortunately, there's a lot more gum than tooth on some of our patients. So, um, but actually it makes it easier to intubate. So I like that. So in this case, I would document 21 at the tooth, as you can see there. That's extremely important because when we document that, then we also get a chest X-ray after the intubation. Then we know the tube is in the correct spot. Three, uh, it's usually two to three centimeters above the carina. And that's where we want to keep it. So if you're in here doing your aggressive oral care, and your endotracheal tube is looking about like that at the end of your oral care. And if you start hearing some gurgling coming from their lower oral pharynx, their glottis, you probably pulled the tube out. But you can see this tube has migrated. Now they're about 19 at the tooth. This is probably easy enough where you can call the respiratory therapist in. They can deflate the cuff and reinsert and it will be in the proper place. But it's always good. You wouldn't do this clinically. There you go. But it's always good to make sure you document and you know when you start oral care where the marking is at the tooth. Another thing that we like to use is commercial tube holders. This is one of them. This is a Hollister tube holder. Very, very common. It comes from the package like this. These are kind of nice, um, flexible. They stick to the skin. They kind of get more sticky over time. We like to change these things because they do get kind of nasty um, and they get really sticky to the skin. So we change them every couple days or as soiled. So a couple different things with this. I'm going to give you a little tip. I'm going to show you a close up here. So you can see two sides of this. So you see this side here and then you see this side here. Um, and this little piece is what holds the tube and it goes back and forth, back and forth. Well, on this side here, this piece will actually come off and I'll show you. This is a Jimmy trick, if you will. So when you get these out of the package, they sit like sits like this. So it goes on the patient like this. And you notice these two little flanges 
right here and right here are sticking up. And the most common thing, especially with our older generation, our older patients, is this thing tends to fall down like with the ET tube and hang down this way really far. What I like to do is to flip it. So to flip it like this. The problem is, is when you get this from the package, I'm gonna show you real quick. So if you get this from the package, you can't just flip it up. See, I like these little pieces. See these little pieces here, how they kind of go down. It kind of gives a little bit of rigidity and holds it there. But our, our tube holder is upside down, so that's not gonna work. So if you take it off one of the sides, you can see one of the sides is thinner than the other. It pulls off. Flip this around and put it back on this way. Now this is gonna help. It's gonna get the same, same way to hold the endotracheal tube in, but it's gonna give these little plastic things kind of on the bottom. And I think what that does, it helps to keep this up and keep it from sagging. Now, if you notice on here, you got some little teeth and that's gonna grab to the tube when you put this on. Now, make sure that you put it on and it's snug. Do not crank it down really, really hard. When you do that, you're gonna decrease the size of the lumen of the tube. We've only got 6.5 millimeters right now, and that's actually a pretty small tube. So you don't wanna decrease the size because it'll get snagged when you do inline suction and whatnot. So make sure it's secure, put it on, this clips down, and then we secure this thing. Remember, like I've said multiple times in the past, the endotracheal tube is not secured in the airway by the cuff. It is secured by the device. Same with a trach. So we're gonna put these things on pay special attention to the ears do not go right over the center of the ear if there's any way you can kind of change this get it to go down and that's why I, sometimes I take them down a little bit lower and that's why I really like to have these pieces here to hold that tube up really important part of oral care is moving this into tracheal tube a lot of people if you're going to do good oral care you want to make sure you're not causing breakdown in the lips so this is <clears throat> this is the way I like to document this is considered center, so I'll put a C with a circle, very, very shorthand, and then this would be R with a circle to the right, center, and then to the left. <clears throat> Some people will actually document two clicks over, two clicks over, two clicks over. I say center, right, or left. Every time I do oral care, every two hours, I'll move it. So there's not a constant pressure on one aspect of the lip. That's the great thing about these. We can maintain our endotracheal tube and go back and forth and not put pressure on the lips. So that's a great thing about the Hollister uh, ET tube securement system. So um, center, right, center, left. So left, center, right. And then if you're getting one side that's starting to break down a little bit, just go center and right, center, right. So let's say if the left side's breaking down, we'll just do this for a while, but we'll document that it moves every two hours. That's really, really, really important when we have this in the tracheal tube because any pressure or the lips getting pinched in there you'll have a you'll easily get a hospital acquired pressure ulcer and that is not good especially for the patient and also for your hospital it's not good to have those those are reportable events so we want to make sure we're moving this tube back and forth hey thanks for listening to me today gave me a couple extra hints and talked about the oral care uh, make sure that you like it subscribe it comment into it uh, so we can do some more videos and uh Keep it real and uh, send me some suggestions. Thanks for watching.